We have a small group. Let's just, if you don't mind, I'm Kelly Delaney from the Drupal Association. I'm the development um, director, and sometimes that gets confused with I'm not a developer, I am in fundraising. Uh, do you mind if I ask where, what organizations y'all are from? I'm with Interactive Knowledge. We're a technology shop in Charlotte, North Carolina. Nice. Good to meet you. Thanks for coming. Uh, I'll go all the way over there. Ah, uh, I like where, thank you for telling me where you're from, too. That's good. Okay. Uh. Nice, nice to see you. Death. <sighs> nice, thank you. Awesome. Wait, blue. Say it again. The org. Oh, yes. Thank you. Seed. Yes. Good. Well, thank you all for coming. Uh, this is typically the supporting partner roundtable slash certified partners. We can go through with the differences between those as well. And we have Tim Doyle, CEO, special guest today, and Yitka Pilar. I'm going to go to our so oftentimes, you're going to talk to us a lot if your organization has joined the supporting partner program or certified partners. And I can just do a run through of what those are. So those are our main fundraising programs. Organizations who use Drupal give back to the uh, Drupal Association through a supporting partner level. There's multiple levels depending on what financial um, give that your organization can give from like 25000 a year down to 1000 and there's a few benefits that go along with it, but it's mostly a um, philanthropic give to continue to move the project forward and continue to keep all of your awesome, wonderful employees involved in the Drupal Association. And then we'll get to the Certified Partner Program, but that one recognizes makers of the Drupal um, community who contribute code. I'm going to, we're going to have a short little agenda here and then we can get into discussion about what anybody else would like had questions or wants to talk about, but I'm going to bring up Tim Doyle to talk about uh, some new things coming with our strategic initiative. Thank you, Kelly. Sure. I'm not sure we need the microphone, but I know, I'm here. but it makes you feel really official. So, you know. <laughs> Great authority. Uh, <laughs> hi, I'm Tim Doyle, uh, CEO of the Drupal Association. I've been on for about eight months. Uh, and in that time, uh, I've been learning a lot. I still have a lot to learn, so I, I look forward to our discussion so I can hear from you all what you're, what you're experiencing, your views of what you want out of the Certified Drupal Partner Program, et cetera. Um, one thing I want to talk about is that the board just voted and approved, and I have two board members, Nikki and Ryan here, just walked in, <laughs> um, just voted and approved a three-year uh, strategic plan for um, the Drupal Association. And that will be published on our website today or tomorrow, um, but I wanna go over at a high level what we're focusing on. And we're focusing on three things, innovation, marketing, and fundraising. Um, innovation, our goal is to triple contributions to um, uh, code contributions in three years. Uh, we will be doing that through a number of strategies that we will plan, um, but one of those has to do with the certified partner program. We really want to position the program to really support makers. So if you're, if you're a contributor, to, you know, we want to support you. If you don't contribute as much, we want to prompt you to contribute more. Uh, find ways, uh, you know, how do we make that easier um, uh, to do. So we, we're looking at Certified Drupal Partner Program, which we'll talk about in a little bit more detail um, as like the vehicle to help us uh, leverage your expertise in Drupal uh, and, and convert that into contributions that help us reach that goal. Um, if you heard the Dries note, you know, uh, innovation it, it was a theme of the Dries note too, so uh, there's a alignment between uh, the project, the Drupal Association, and the Drupal Association board on this matter, uh, the, the need for innovation. Second is marketing, um, and in a nutshell, uh, what, what we're being asked to do at the Drupal Association is to take a direct and active role in marketing Drupal, marketing Drupal as a product. Um, that has not been done uh, as a program in the past, um, but my hope is to make it a programmatic responsibility of the Drupal Association uh, to begin to mark. So if um, end users who are looking for CMSs come to the Drupal website, there's content there that sells them on Drupal. Um, we may attend, we're hopefully attending conferences, non-Drupal conferences, to get the word out about Drupal, to compete you know, toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with proprietary CMSs. Um, so that's, that's a new venture for us, and the board has explicitly said we want the Drupal Association to have the capacity to market, have the capacity and the expertise and the, the people, et cetera, to take a direct 
uh, role in marketing Drupal. And then lastly, fundraising. It's really resource raising so that we can, um, and, the, and the goal is, you know, is uh, to triple our budget in three years. So that's also a very ambitious goal. Um, but the, the purpose of that is the uh, Drupal Association uh, finances are stable right now, but are lean and are not positioned for the aspirations of the board. Uh, the board wants us to do a lot, so we're gonna need to raise revenues to do a lot. Um, and that can come in a lot of different ways. So if you heard the Pittsburgh um, uh, contest that we had, uh, that was a test case. That was just kind of one way we could do it. We had uh, companies that were willing to invest directly in innovation. We had uh, folks with ideas of what they would like to do, and the Drupal Association played kind of the matchmaker, the middleman, connecting those resources. So when I say ra you know, raising revenues, it's, it's for those type of initiatives. How do we can raise our revenues and then translate those revenues right back into uh, specific projects in the, in the project or in the community? Um, so we're at, um, when I started eight months ago, I came to an association that had, as, as I said, stable finances, but lean. Um, we are, um, we, and we publish our, our, fin our financials on the website, so this is all public knowledge. Um, uh, we weathered the, uh, the pandemic well. Um, I know the Drupal Cares program, where many of your companies stepped up to help make sure that with DrupalCon going virtual, big loss of revenue, um, that, that the, uh, the Drupal Association could be an ongoing concern. Um, coming out of that, we're very stable but lean. Uh, Drupal, uh, DrupalCon still accounts for a significant part of our revenue. Um, and in my mind, too much. It's too much, it's too great a percentage. We need to diversify our revenue sources uh, because the, uh, the conference industry is, is unstable right now. You know, some conferences are coming back, some are not coming back at all, some are coming back. You know, our attendance here is, is up from last year, very positive, but not, not where it was in Seattle and uh, before the pandemic. So, we, you know, that's an unstable revenue source that we uh, are probably too dependent on, really, and one of my goals is to, to diversify. Um, uh, but we do have, uh, we just held a public board meeting, and we do have funds to invest. So there's a board uh, um, fund that we set aside 600,000, and at the board's discretion, we can use that money to invest in different ideas. So we did invest 30,000 in Pittsburgh. Um, we also invested uh, some of that money to bring on Alex uh, onto our team to help us with innovation. So uh, Alex Moreno. Um, so, uh, so we do have some, you know, a little bit of money that we can invest in these initiatives that, that you'll hear about as we roll out our strategic plan, but just a little bit. And my goal, my, my, my job, is to see how we can enhance those revenues. Should I move on, or is there anything else? Okay. Um, so this is, yeah, this is, actually, this is the part I would like to get into a conversation. Yeah. So, as I said, DrupalCon is, <clears throat> we're not back to where we were before the pandemic. Um, we, we had early registrations, we're up this year, and we're up overall from last year. So I think we're at 1,400 or so attendees. And last year we're like 1,200, 1,260. So we're up a little bit, but we had early registrations were going very well, and then they, they, they did not maintain that rate. And so we are, we're ending up up, but not up as much as we thought we were going to early on. I'm interested to hear from you all um, what is your company? Is your like what is your company's posture towards conferences? Are you sending the same number of people? Are you sending more people, fewer people? What are your thoughts on DrupalCon? So if I can ask anyone who's willing to uh, to speak up, I'd or be is interested. Is your organization going to the same amount of events that they were like in 2019? Do you have a pulse? Yeah, uh, Wait, just speak up. Yeah. Yeah. So our staff, we're a small staff of eight. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the remote work has certainly been a real benefit to a lot of our employees, but, you know, they're still missing that, like, you know, occasional or regular connection. So we are sending, um, pro we're attending about the same number um, of events as we did in, like, 2018, okay. 2019, mm -hmm. or at least we're hoping to get back to that. Yeah. Um, just because, again, you know, just the value of that in-person, you know, interaction. Yeah, sure. Us. Yeah. yeah, and you're, are you sending the same number of people generally? Yeah, well, I mean, we're growing, so okay. we try to send most of all of our development staff and then our um, our support staff. Nice. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. That's how you saying 60% of our team. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. What are other companies experienced? Nikki? So I can speak from a, my role of our CAC. So in past years, we, like our staff has been invited to come and just hear a pitch from individuals defending education budgets that people can elect to postpone their budgets and award coming. And they've invested in anybody who's a speaker if they're looking to do clearance budgets. So okay. that's been about half of our staff experience. So oh, that's, that's good. But also that encourages people to speak too. Probably that's a good too a good idea because you get a free ticket when you speak. And you have to pay for travel though. And are you, is Lullabot seeing you know? This, are you going to the same number of events and sending the same number of people overall, or more or less, or about the same? I would say it's the same from our perspective at this point. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this, if you hear from a few others, then, but that would, your pivot's probably the direction we're going anyway, okay. so. Anyone else want to share? Because it's helpful to us to hear what, what your companies, how your companies are viewing DrupalCon. Uh, to answer your question yeah. about the number of conferences, yeah, yeah. still, Valentius is still attending the same number of conferences, camps, uh, like Adobe Summit, you know, all, everything, but yeah. Okay. We do it all. <laughs> <laughs> we allowed to say that in here? We attended the conference. That's all. We didn't do anything else. <laughs> you same goes to all the others. The same, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Anyone else want to share? Or? Oh, oh okay. thank you for coming. What, what company are you with? <laughs> okay. Nice. Welcome. So you were ready to come back, though. You're you're enjoying in person. Yeah, but this is my second conference this year. Oh, great. Yeah. That's okay. good. Okay. Right. Anyone else want to share? Don't have to. Thank you. So my experience is a little mixed. This is like my 16th Drupalcon. Oh yeah. Wow. Um, Okay. Nice. It's a growing practice, and DrupalCon is always in the room for their students, and with, Cleo, with the growth of the practice, I would want to continue to keep on the increased participation of the general public. Okay. Can I, is Horizontal um, headquartered in Minnesota? Minnesota? Okay, so I remember is when I met Horizontal, it was before DrupalCon Minnesota, Minneapolis in 2020, and we were, you know, they were planning something really big. There was a lot of growth there, but I'm happy that y'all have come back to sponsor <laughs> and attended. What would have been? Yeah. Hey, Piyush. Sorry. Nice. That's what you get when you come um, in late. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really. <laughs> it's a small group, so I'm saying hi. <laughs> So what was your pivot, the, the question you were going to have? Um, or? You know, I, I did not attend uh, another conference that I may have been to. <laughs> but it was really focused at marketing to potential clients, okay. mm -hmm. uh, people who are evaluating a CMS or you know, a platform. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't, I don't know that we've seen a lot of that here in the last few years mm -hmm. of this is a in my mind again, this is a developer-focused conference. Great, uh, but I think from you know marketing standpoint, it could attract people who are considering platform selection. Yeah. Who want to evaluate options that they have. You know, the, at that other summit in uh, Las 
Vegas, there were a lot of people that were there because they were doing platform evaluations. Okay. And so if, if there's a way to attract attendees and have maybe a track for you know, people who are evaluating Drupal as a, as a platform, mm -hmm. um, and tailoring some content to them, it may attract more people, which is great for you know, the, the, you know, the practices, the Drupal practices, uh, but also great for the association because that can drive some more revenue. Yeah. Yeah, or from the conference. Yeah. I don't know if you said you didn't want no. that to be the, the nexus of revenue. No, I would never say no to revenue. So <laughs> let me be clear. Um, uh, no, right, but I think that's, so that idea of, you know, I think you said it best, Drup, you know, DrupalCon has a developer conference. Um, what are other thoughts on attracting, you know, do other people feel that same way? Like, should we be adding a track or, you know, modifying DrupalCon to attract the, the end user business decision makers, separate events, what do you think? I do feel like uh, as an exhibitor, uh -huh. that would be something that, that would Yeah. Be potentially visiting our booth. Um, so yeah, I think that would be something fun. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, we had a yes. quick chat about this in the forum already. Uh, I'll just give you an example. That's a good idea, I think. Um, I came in late, so I don't know if you have something on the third point here, but. No, we haven't talked to any. Well, uh, okay. go anywhere you want. Go ahead, anywhere you want. Go far. Sure. So we, we traditionally have been focusing on engaging, selling, and serving agencies. Yeah. So. And we, one question we asked for you guys, is Accelerant, are you attending the same number of conferences in general this year in your staff, or are you, going, are you attending more, are you attending less? In, like not DrupalCon, but just any conferences? Yeah, we are attending more. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm based out of India. This is my third flight to the US. To the US. Oh, wow, so yeah. That's a bit of a conversation, but yes, we are attending a bit more. So you're platinum level at, on right. whatever airlines, you know, <laughs> <laughs> whatever airlines yeah. you need to be on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because we see it the same way as Pontus, is that we see it as a developer conference. Mm -hmm. So we focus our sponsorship for DrupalCon for that. But I think that maybe we have to be clearer, and I don't know how we are going to do that, but maybe we have to be clearer about what we are, because the, otherwise you're creating frustration. So there's companies that come here that actually like are thinking that they're going to get leads, and then mm -hmm. they get frustrated because there are people who are giving up the contract, and you know, they're obviously not walking around when they're but on the other hand, we've been very successful with thinking about it as a developer conference because then we do it differently. We talk, we think about recruiting and, uh, you know, and, and like attracting the senior developer at the company. But that's how we've been getting lots of clients because the senior developer is walking around and he's been interested in our expertise. But that's a totally different message than I would be sending to a decision maker in a in a marketing team at Pfizer. Yep. But name it, maybe, yeah. yeah. I hear you. What, what would be great? Yeah. Do you want to talk about the VXO Summit? I think it happened in Europe a couple of years back. In, in Frankfurt? Yes, that's right. Yeah, we did a whole conference only for that, a business conference. Mm -hmm. right. How was the experience? Was it successful? Yeah, we, we, like, because it was like business, business attract, like it was a group 
called Business Conference mm -hmm. in Europe that we created. And then of course, like then, then of course, decision makers, you know, the message is also out there that like, we're gonna be talking about Drupal as a platform and you know, then you're gonna do this Adobe, you know, Adobe is like talking about their product, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah. yeah. Do you remember in 2019? Yeah. We did, yes. And it's, I think it's just a way, so in 2019 we had an executive summit and we invited leaders from um, end user organizations and we had a day and it was actually off, off, I'm gonna call it off campus, in a hotel next to the convention center. And then we, they all came in and met sponsors and that was really great and someone actually brought that up to me today. The it was interesting, the end users didn't find value. A, fu a few of them already had Drupal agencies that they worked with and they were like, why am I gonna come to this? I already have a Drupal agency. And then other agencies were worried, you know, we need connections to sometimes to get the agencies, or sorry, the end users to come. And so it made sense. Agencies were like, why am I gonna bring my client and uh, risk them getting poached by some other organization? So. I, but there are other ways. That's not to say like we can't do it again. I like the idea of like one day, what you just said, um, where we bring, we'll identify the end users, we'll get them here, but it's just gonna take a little more thought. And, um, but that was a really good idea, one day, um, and then other, and then like introduce them to our, our supporting partners, certified partners. That's a really good idea. Um, 2019, yes. Welcome. Uh, but maybe, I mean, I know a lot of events, you know, all across the globe in the MVC scope. Uh, and one of the uh, things that I have learned from Salesforce is they do demo jam, jam sessions uh, during their conferences, which attracts a lot of their uh, direct customers. So, of nice. course, uh, Salesforce is a different product, Drupal is a different product, but maybe the community can group and bring in good projects that yeah. for their customers, and we are doing a session there to attract other businesses to see what has been done in the past and how things are working that will instill more confidence uh, in the end user as well, but maybe an opportunity for uh, agencies who are exhibiting their, uh, their pitch for their services as well. So I like it, yeah. yeah. So here comes the challenge again. Like okay. Yeah. So like we, that's why you don't see any sessions here that are actually showing the, you know, you see maybe one and one, but mm -hmm. there are no Case studies. on how that project was created and contributed to Drupal. Mm -hmm. You know, so like we've been very clear in the community that we don't want to have like these type of sessions that actually are the sessions that attract the people who are actually evaluating Drupal. So I, I think we are a little more, in my opinion, we are a little more flexible today, the Drupal community. I think we are, we have a little bit grown out of I think we are okay if like Acquia comes and shows Side Factory and Pantheon, you know, they're okay to demo it, but I'm just saying, I think, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, maybe third, so you know, today, it's like Monday, Tuesday, we have all these sessions. Um, Wednesday's a contributor day you know, idea, maybe Thursday is something like that day where uh, maybe the developers who don't have any, aren't trying to sell and they're here to learn, they take off and it's the business leaders who are trying to sell and we invite the end users and do kind of case study things like that for one day, I don't know. It's a good idea. Yeah, when, when you were talking, I heard in my head, uh, you know, like a solution summit, so if someone's looking solution for, summit. if they're in healthcare, or if they're in finance, <laughs> right. or if they're in dining, mm -hmm. and they're, they're really thinking about, you know, what platform should I use? Like leveraging some of this amazing talent mm -hmm. and agencies that are in this room to like help facilitate those conversations. Yeah. You know, yeah, if, if you know, if your organization is really great at dining, Yeah. Expand the user base, I guess. Nice. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. All right. We're gonna, I can move on to the next topic.
Okay, the Drupal Certified Partner Program. So this is our program that recognizes organizations that contribute code to the um, to Drupal.org, and so it's there's still a financial give for it. But I'm gonna actually this was off topic, but um, Drupal.org. There we go. So um, just if you're not familiar with it. Okay, so on the marketplace, we have, so when you become certified by reaching a certain amount of contribution credits in a year, you get ranked by level. And um, so first, the marketplace is recognized by levels. But um, one feature I wanted to show everyone that came out this year was how to find how many um, credits you have. And I'm looking for Drupal Association. I do have access to everybody's, um, but I'm just going to open ours. And um, okay, sorry, scroll, Drupal Association. Not very high up in the market. I thought we were a little bit. Do you want to go on the, go on the, okay, this one. Yeah, go to the community. Thank you. And then go to the organizations. Bati, Everything. you know everything. Because. <laughs> there we are. Okay, so there's. Uh, one person in your organization who set up the marketplace profile and is the owner, and if they if they go to their profile, how we just kind of clicked on it, and you go to your owner t owner tools, this is how you can figure out how many weighted credits you have in the last 12 months. And if you're wondering who that is, you can always email us. Um, that's not helpful. That just emails so you're like who My, Kelly at association.drupal.org, and if you know, oftentimes people turn over and the person who owned the marketplace profile left. You can we can change it to someone else, but so it's just this is new this year. Um, just give everybody a little or a little bit of idea how close they are to being in the certified partner program. Over here we have a little current weighted contribution credits. We're almost to the diamond here. We're not eligible because. We are the Drupal Association. So, share. Um, that was a little background on it. Don't show, I don't know, slideshow. Can you maybe explain to us briefly, like, you talk about weighted credits? Yeah. Either you're going to talk about it again, but like, what is the difference between a weighted credit and a credit? Sure. Every time your organization, and I will ask for assistance in explaining this, there are unweighted credits just by how many um, issues and things you close and projects you work on. You get, like, one credit for everything you do. However, how widely used the module is, how much weight it holds, that uh, algorithm that Drew's created, will then add weight to it. And so the weight is important. So yes, it's there are a lot of projects you can work on, and it's just one-to-one -one credit. But then I believe if you work on a very um, well-used module that's worked on, um, that's very important and used by a lot of sites, you get a lot of weighted credits for it. And we don't exactly know the algorithm. That's been a, an ask for a long time from um, organizations like, well, how do we know what's important, what's not? So that is what our engineering team is working on also. So in the next few weeks, here is our weighted credits. It'll show then also what your unweighted credits are. And after that, in the next year or so, is coming kind of a rundown, a how-to of what is has the most weighted credits, what has the most weighted modules. Um, things like that to make it more transparent to see how you can get up in the marketplace um, for a Drupal certified partner. And part of our strategic initiative is to increase makers and to highlight them, promote them more. And so that's why this year we're going to be doing a few, actually in 2024, we're going to be doing a few modifications to the certified partner program that we haven't completely worked out more. But the reason we're going to do any changes, just always know it's to the benefit of a strategic plan to accelerate innovation by continuing to empower makers and we want to just continue marketing Drupal as the platform of choice. And by doing, by the way we do that is by increasing contribution. And in the future, we will also have more. We have a lot of organizations that join, and they're like, I want to be a certified partner. I want to start contributing. And we want to be the ones to help them start that initial first-time contribution. And DrupalCon is a great place for that, because on this Wednesdays, we have mentored contributions, first-time contribution days, and Tim, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, so I think um, what I would add to that is, as we, you know, the strategic goal of, of tripling innovation, of tripling contributions, you know, under the innovation objective, I see the certified Drupal partner program as right for helping us leverage, uh, leverage the resources to do that. What I mean by that is, uh, I think I look to the certified partners as the folks that should be um, the shining example to the rest of the world in terms of their Drupal expertise and their contributions. So that's what 
obviously that temperature is just the marketplace, but that should also just be part of the designation. Um, it should be less about the, the, the financial contribution, but more about the contributions of code and, and non-code contributions that your companies make. So that's, and, and my, my philosophy on that is if we're supporting makers and we're doing it the right way, then the revenue, the revenue that we need to support that will flow, right? Uh, you know, not to confuse the two. Um, so I think some of the changes that, we'll, that we're looking to make, and we had board discussions this past weekend on this, uh, is to um, enhance the program um, by making a, a true program focus on makers. So that means, you know, really focus on, on the contribution um, and make it, uh, and, and market it so that folks, if someone came to me and said, hey, I want to do Drupal, can you point me to where there are good companies I should be talking to? You go to this list. That's the list we're going to say. We're going to say everyone on that list is a certified Drupal partner. That's, you should be picking off that list. So the whole idea is to incent companies to want to be on that. So those are change, we'll be announcing changes as, as, we, as we lock them down, um, but you should expect in 2024 a, diff, a, a different program, enhanced program for our Drupal certified partners um, uh, and uh, in support of the strategic plan. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe from a Drupal association perspective, if this is our strategic goals, you can think about it like this. If you were, uh, your comp like all of you are makers that are in here, because otherwise you wouldn't be here. And it's absolutely the best for the Drupal project if you all continue be coming the most successful affiliation here. That you guys all, like all people, get the projects. So by that, like what we are trying to here to do is actually to create a program where you can really say and put the stamp on and you can say like, hey, I am, you know, going to have an advantage. So maybe we're not going to have an advantage if you're both like pitching for the same project, but that's not that often happening. So like, but how can we actually win against those who are out there? and using Drupal and actually delivering a bad, not as good job always, mm -hmm. because they are not like really contributing and being part of the, you know. So I think like it's a, it's a great, and maybe shout out to Lollapop, I've not been here. Yeah. Uh, Which is, you know. Yeah, I'll actually say, uh, uh, I will say um, in the past, I mean, we may not have been as incentivized to share back some of the evolution of products that we're doing for clients, but I know from the That's what the marketplace should demonstrate. Like, you, look, you know, you make those investments and you move up. We have, correct me if my numbers are wrong, Kelly, but we have 53 certified partners. Our goal in three years is to have 106. We have 100 supporting? 150. 150 supporting. supporting. How are we going to get there? We're going to push those supporting partners to become certified partners to increase their contribution. That's how we're going to get there, I hope. Um, that's what, when you say focus on makers, that's what we mean. Really make the designation. On Drupal.org, also a, oh, please. I'm Let's sorry, see. I just wanted to add that I think there's a lot of people, makers in this room, that you know, we want to be able to contribute these things back. It's all often a hard discussion mm -hmm. of being like, well, how can we afford to do that? How are we, you know, that's like unpaid time, and, and I think it's helped by approaching, you know, when we're writing these custom, this custom code, thinking about that from the beginning, but also, Take 
my budget, take it from yeah. his budget. Yeah. Right. So like, this is marketing. Like yeah. because yeah. we can show, you know, an actual, you know, moving of the needle by saying like, okay, it's you know not just all the other things we're doing for marketing. It's also our contributions to your goal. Actually, if we're you know, you know, ending up in the right place in the marketplace page, we can actually track that leads are coming from these things. Like mm -hmm. that incentivizes all the people, yeah. the people who wouldn't be just doing it out of the kindness of their own heart yeah. or, or care for the project. Like we're we got to get them on board, and we can with this work. So I, I just thank you. That's, that, well, that's good feedback too. I, didn't, I was in my head making that connection to the marketing side and how that the value proposition. That's there. how we think about it. That's yeah. awesome. I was talking. Go ahead. I was going to say, yeah. just the uh, the uh, observation about the end user. How do you how do you convince the end user, your client, to, hey, it's worth you know it's worth a little bit more to contribute back. I heard someone say that um, they're seeing RFPs where they're asking where you are in the marketplace. Has anyone is, is that? Or if you're certified, or if you or do contribute, certified. or yes. yeah. That's what, yeah. An organization this morning told me that when you, I mean, maybe you all are familiar with this. If you're selling and you're trying to close something, when um, they mentioned that the code that they will be using was written by the like organization, the agencies like like One X wrote this. We are like in the ecosystem. You want to have us? We know every. We know Drupal. We are like in it. So. And users doing the RFPs. Mm -hmm. You can somehow like make a checklist of like, hey, here's a list of things that is potentially going to make your product more successful. Uh, if you work with a, a, a company that is a certified partner, put that into your RFP. You know, like if you do a little bit like of that, you know, because it's yeah. hard for me to, you know, I can come in and I put my stamp on the table and I say like I'm a certified partner, and they are all like, okay, what's that? You know, they go and look for it on the website, they don't find it. That's yeah. You know, so like, so if there's a, like a, like a, the batch is very clarified and you can maybe educate by sending out to the government and mm -hmm. the higher end summit, you know, then you can actually. That's a good that. idea. Yeah, we have, I like it. Yeah, we have the idea of drafting model uh, RFP language and, and make it available on the website for government to download and use. That would be like, are you, you, know, you must be certified, or you get five extra points in the scoring if you're certified, um, or you must contribute back to the, you know, you must have a, 
experience, demonstrated contributions back to the project, you know, experience requirements, whatever. So we, we have talked, I think we have drafted, I think Tim drafted yeah. something like that, but that is the direction we want to go. Like uh, us communicating very, very starkly, these are, the, these are the companies that we recommend you work with. If they're on this list, thus you should be looking at them. Uh, I was just say, uh, hopefully that can be done in a way that doesn't conflate this practice certification or agency certification program with maybe a big vendor's certification or a partner program. Yeah. Um, I think that'd be a, 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 yeah, a way to just make sure that people aren't getting confused by all the different certifications and partner programs that are available. Yeah. Like this is the gold standard for what's the yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. Um, Oh, absolutely. Non-code things, the yep. Issue. But there's nobody mm -hmm. already in the system right now like to monitor the socials and people with maybe influence. Um, and that might help like, to yeah. look at it from a bigger scale on like how we drive that marketing. Yeah. Um, I agree. But it's not easy. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I was like, yeah. <laughs> Go do it, but it's not easy. <laughs> no, I'm good. Yeah, um, I don't think they're weighted. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. Until it's true, before. yeah. So there's, I think there's even less transparency, maybe too little transparency there where there could be a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. I, can, I can add that for just for how that works today. So you can basically, uh, a non-code work, which is maybe organizing a camp or organizing an event. What you can do easily is you can go to Drupal.org And you can just create issues and you can start crediting. So you get some credit for that. So I doubt that that's being weighted because that's not being used by anyone. So that's just a one credit for one. So that's a lot of work though. You know, like, you know, I'm not gonna go in here and for every meeting I do with the Drupal Association of Germany and also to create an issue for it and then like assign the people. But it's like, it's a hard. So what we've been doing is like we introduced these roles on your Drupal org organization profile where you can actually assign your Yeah. Roles, like, and we give like also credit for that. And then we have events on Drupal.org, which is you know, the, the um, class events. Mm -hmm. So if you put in a, if you're doing an event and you've registered that on Drupal.org, then actually you can say what was the sponsor in the organization and who was speaking and so on. So like there's, you're starting to connect the dots a little bit. Yeah. So it's I, not I, easy. I see Some more transparency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I get there's a, a desire to not be too transparent because yeah. we don't want people to game the system, but I think there's sometimes a lack of visibility into even what we could be yeah. doing it. Yeah. Can, you, can you just for the for the interest is because there is a thing called transparency, let's just fix that please, so we can agree on that. Go now all the way up to the marketplace, please. So and then you go a little bit down on the right. So there, is, uh, there are 
Am I looking at the right stuff? Okay. Yeah, Project right. individual members. Project support kit. How many members do you have? I mean, it's a little link. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I that was yeah. Well, y'all, we have four minutes left. If anyone had any off-topic questions from this, let us know, or we can continue on this one too. But it was all nice seeing everybody. Thank you for coming and discussing meeting Tim Lennon, and Yit Kapilar is probably one of your account managers as well as me. And I have cards, if anyone, you know, I showed you those owner tools, if you're like not sure who on your team owns that or want you wanna change it, um, I'm happy to just hand you my email address so we can work it out next week. Is there any um, plan on the roadmap to improve the management of the, like, the fact that only one person, you know, it's kind of seems that yeah. like you have to email you about that. Like, yeah. What, what the kind of, I, I would like that to see that too. That's a good idea. I can put that on, I can ask my engineering team, but the workaround, what a lot of folks do is they make one user name for the organization and share it. It's not the greatest, you know, it's not the per perfect, but that's one way around it. But I like that idea. Yeah. I have the same question for people that work in this. Okay. Share access to Oh, good. Okay. Thank you. I'll take those to Tim Lennon. <laughs> I like that. Thank you all very much. Yay!